Formula One, has produced 34 world champions in its 72 years of existence. 16 of them have been multiple world champions, accounting for 54 titles. Two of them have accounted for 14 titles, while eight have accounted for 28 titles, and six have accounted for the remaining 12. Only 10 drivers have successfully defended their titles a total of 21 times. So, it is inherently difficult to defend an F1 title successfully. The driver with the greatest number of successful title defenses is the legendary Michael Schumacher, with one successful defense at Benetton and four at Ferrari. This is another record that Sir Lewis would have equaled, had he not been cruelly robbed in Abu Dhabi last year. The way things are going this season, with only three races completed, it appears that the superimposed Max Verstappen will be unable to join that illustrious list. He has so far failed to finish two of the races, and is lying in sixth position, some 46 points behind the runaway leader. It is now a question of where he will rank, in the history of unsuccessful title defences, rather than whether he can successfully defend his gifted title. In the last 20 years or so, the lowest position that a defending champion finished at was fifth. One needs to go back to 1997 to find an unsuccessful title defense finishing lower than fifth. This was the case for the 1996 champion, Damon Hill, who ended up 12th in 1997 after losing his championship winning car for an uncompetitive Arrows Yamaha. The next lowest ranking title defense was that of the great Nicky Lauda in 1985 when he finished 10th in his championship winning McLaren tag with his teammate Alain Prost taking the title. In that year, Lauda started only 14 of the 16 races and suffered 11 retirements. In 1982, Nelson Piquet finished 11th because his car proved to be unreliable. He failed to qualify for the Detroit Grand Prix because of an engine failure during qualifying. In 1980, Jody Schechter ended his title defense in 19th place. His revised championship winning Ferrari was disastrously uncompetitive. He managed only two points, was unable to qualify for one race and retired at the end of the season. Schechter's predecessor suffered a similar fate as the 1978 champion, Mario Andretti, finished 10th in his title defending season, as his car was not competitive. The next lowest ranking title defense belongs to Graham Hill, who finished 7th, and was unable to complete the season due to an injury sustained during the US Grand Prix. Another champion who suffered from not having a competitive car in which to defend his title was the then double champion, Jack Brabham. His Cooper Climax that had carried him to the titles in 1959 and 1960 proved to be uncompetitive in 1961 and he ended up 11th. Juan Manuel Fangio, the first five-time champion in the history of Formula One, also suffered a disastrous defense of his fifth title. In 1958, he finished 14th as his title-winning Maserati was rendered uncompetitive by changes in the regulations. Alberto Ascari, the first and only Italian to win back-to-back -back titles with Ferrari, mounted the worst title defense ever in the history of F1. However, in mitigation, he lost his Ferrari seat in a dispute over pay and ended up coming second to last in a very uncompetitive Lancia. It therefore appears that several factors contribute to a successful title defense, including a reliably competitive car. It would seem, on current evidence that Max Verstappen does not have such. Will history judge him harshly, should he be unable to retain his tainted title?